Hi, folks. This is Rick Doc Walker, the DOC. This is John Kime, and you're listening to the Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. What's going on, Rally? Another victory Monday, man. How you doing? Man, Ted, I'm doing great. You know, we don't get to say that as often as I would like for us to, but nevertheless, we get to say it this week. Let's get it, bro. You know, I was actually surprised, man. You're right. We don't get to say that a ton. And a stat came up on the TV broadcast. Did you know that Rivera is 9-3 and three in November? Oh, so are you saying that we're about to go on a run? Is, I mean, is, you know, is that what I'm hearing? You know, I like to pull these stats out of my ass to defend my opinion. <laughs> so, I mean, he is nine and three in November, and we both picked the commanders to win this past Sunday up in Foxborough. Yeah. So, you know, can we do uh, maybe make him uh, 10 and three and 11 and three next week? I don't know. We'll see how it goes, man. I, w- I would love to see and hear that, brother. I really would. We need it as a fan base, not necessarily for his career, but as a fan base, we need it. Yeah. I mean, still believe, and there are actually a bunch of fans that we're calling in. And for those wondering, it's Monday, November 6th, 340 rally night recording this. There were a bunch of fans calling in to a bunch of DC local radio stations, kind of frustrated about the win thinking we just won. What are you complaining about? Their concern is we're going to keep winning and Rivera is going to stick around and that we mm-hmm. won't get rid of them. And the only way I see Ron staying is if he wins a decisive playoff game. And let me tell you, we ain't there yet. Let's just enjoy the oh, win. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're still crawling. We ain't walking. We're crawling. You got to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. And so uh, we ain't there yet. So, yeah, e- ease your jets, folks. Ease your jets. Yeah, we're not the Raiders, you know, smoking cigars in the locker room and going crazy (laughs) on TV. Yeah. But that's going to be rallying me once the team hits seven wins. Best believe I'm going to have a cigar for that pod, and we'll be up here lighting them up. So it'll be a good time. Definitely will. Definitely will. I ended up actually placing a couple bets on the game this past weekend. One for the Commanders to win, which, hey, I figured that was a lock. The other one, I put in a parlay, and – I don't think you use FanDuel, but they're doing this parlay boost where they give you an extra 50% on top of what it's supposed to be. So I got plus like almost 700 odds Mm. on the commanders to win, Sam to have over 240 yards passing, and Jahan to have over 45 yards receiving. Hit all Uh three of them, man. And uh, That trip to L.A. is uh, going to be possibly doable if I keep hitting a couple more of these. So, oh, we'll see how oh look out now. Look out. Well, well, my man, I didn't hit my parlay. My Uh-oh. parlay was my parlay was commanders win Hunter Henry anytime touchdown and Terry McLaurin anytime touchdown. <laughs> I could have told you that one wasn't pretty difficult. I mean, they definitely shut down number one receivers, but yeah, it's that was. Well, I can't he, believe you bet on Henry to get a touchdown, man. That kills he, me. He, he got it. Oh, he did. He got he it. Did. They trust, picked on Khalid. Trust me, I, I felt that. I felt that he was going to get it, and I just knew that Terry was going to get it. And he was so close. He so was so close. I mean, that would have been a huge win. But also, to back it up, I backed it up with. Uh, B Rob scoring any time touchdown, which oh, he did. So I made my money. I made my money up. So yeah, I always gotta so. have a safe bet. You know, if there is such a thing, you always well, gotta, you gotta try pay to for that. that uh, the victory steak and lobster, man. I saw you didn't get a chance to get it yet. No, not yet. Yeah, man. And 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 I wanna. I, I I apologize on Twitter, but I'll go ahead and apologize it on the pod as well. Hey, I had a lot of people who wanted to take pictures with me, and yesterday I just couldn't because I had to catch a flight back. You know, I initially, you know, I like to stay over Sunday night and leave on Monday, but the powers that be said, "Hey, look, no, we need you back." So I had to get back, and we all know how tra- bad the traffic is at Foxborough. So I had to to uh to beat feet and so i didn't i don't want you to think i was trying to be rude to you but i just i just had to get back and if and when we see each other again i will take all the time out that's needed to take pics it got to the point where um 
security was like, uh, do you need some assistance? <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was some star. I mean, because I mean, it was dude, it, it was weird how everyone just wanted to come down and take pictures, which I appreciate. I mean, I, I, I really do. It, it means a lot. That's awesome, man. I mean, I'm curious. So the trip to New England, you got up there Saturday, right? No, actually, I got there Friday e oh, evening, okay. and and then the, the the trip up there was great, no issues until I got to the rental car place. And I'm not oh, gonna no. name the rent. I'm, I'm not gonna name the rental car place. But while I was in line, I heard a guy come back saying, "You guys are liars. You don't have any cars. I've been standing in in the." the line to get my car for an hour now and I don't have my car. So you guys are liars. And I heard the, the, uh, counter person saying, no, we have cars. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't control what happens out there. I can only control what happens behind the counter. And I was like, Hmm. So needless to say, I landed at, I landed at nine. All right. Stayed in the rental car line for about an hour. Oh my gosh. J just, just the line to get to the counter. Okay. Yeah. So I said, "Hey man, talk to me. What's the deal? What's what's really going on, sir? I, I don't know." I said, "Come on, man." I said, "I put I put my rally captain radio voice on." I said, "Come on, man, talk to me. What well, what's up, bro?" And he was like, "Hey man, we had five people call out, <laughs> so they didn't have anybody cleaning the cars, dude. So yes, if I didn't have a non-refundable car rental, I would have canceled that puppy, and I would have doggone went to." one of the next ones over. So I get out there, sure as, sure as heck, I get out there and the people that I saw in line before me, they're waiting in line. Oh man. <laughs> so I give, the, yeah, I give the attendant my, uh, I give the attendant my rental agreement and he goes, hey, just, we're running about 45 minutes to an hour. So I said, all right, no problem. I mean, I, you can't do anything. You're stuck like Chuck. So I said, all right, so I wait. And the car comes up finally after about 45 to 50 minutes, which he was, he was true. So, uh, get to the hotel, probably about 1230 in the morning, Saturday right. morning. So, so yeah, you did yeah, get there Saturday bro. morning. Well, well, yeah, I got to <laughs> sleep at Saturday morning. Yeah. So, uh, but nevertheless, then, uh, Went to the stadium to see the new lighthouse that they had built. Went up in, inside so of that. So that thing's new. I had no idea because they kept showing it on TV. Yeah. And one of the clips, I guess there was a, a couple doing a selfie with the field in the background. I'm like, please don't tell me that's where people sit for the game because that thing looked high as hell. No. Well, you know, so it's $5 to go up into the uh, – lighthouse if you're a veteran it's free so i think that that's a great deal but you can actually go up there during the game and you can take selfies at one point in time there were a lot of people standing up outside of that lighthouse i think you know you can only stay up there for you know maybe 15 minutes or something like that however long the the average tourist wants to stay up there nothing longer than that and uh come on down so at one point in time i think i may may have seen 20 people standing along that uh, that rail, that glass rail that they have up there. Just to take an overhead view of the game and just hang out up top. Yeah, hey man, it's worth it. it really I don't know, is. man. I'm, I'm not a biggest fan of heights and just being up top uh -huh. there. Like, did the whole space needle thing when we were, well, I was in Seattle a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm guessing you're going to go this week when you're in town. I don't know, but I'm guessing a bunch of our yeah. listeners that are going to be there are going to go. You can actually lean up against the glass and sit against a glass of the space needle and then take pictures and you can scan a QR code when you're mm -hmm. up there and they've got like cameras above you that will take a selfie in case you don't got a phone. And now nah, my ass was not leaning up against that glass. This is with my luck. It's able to take like a million people leaning against it. And I'm a million and one and that thing starts cracking. So I'll pass on that. But uh, how was the, uh, the team rally? Did you get a chance to stop by that? The rally was was good. It was good. Um, I got a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of thoughts. It's just a matter of getting those ideas to the right person so that they can take it fully advantage of it. Um, it was a nice crowd. I'd say probably uh, 120, 150. Okay. Yeah, um, B. Mitch and Tana Man came and they did a podcast after the rally. But uh, by then I, I had left and went to this little soul pool spot. You know me, I man. I saw the I, pictures, man. That food looked good. 
Oh, man, it was the best, bro. It was the best. I hated they were closed uh, because I would have loved to have gotten it to go plate. I, I really would. And uh, the mac and cheese was like just it wasn't it was I can't even I can't even put it into words. But you know how when you bite into something, you just go, mm, that's how it was. Fair so uh, yeah, the owner came out. out there. The, the owner came out and, and, and he asked me, he goes, uh, he goes, what are you, Summer? And I was like, nah, they just called me the rally captain. And and I said, best believe once I tell people about your your restaurant, they're going to come. And sure enough, other people, you know, from the pictures, they went to see and taste the food of the restaurant as well. Even Lloyd, me Lloyd, go. Lloyd came out and he, a matter of fact, I was there ready to leave and Lloyd was pulling up. So, hey, man. Oh, that's awesome, man. Stuff. Yeah, I'm glad to hear. It. Did you guys tailgate beforehand? Because I saw you post a picture of where to get field passes. Were there any commanders tailgates out there? Did you get any lobster or any, any chowder while you're out there? Didn't get any lobster or chowder, but shout out to one of our avid listeners, David Calhoun, up in the Connecticut area. He drove down and and he he had this awesome full pork with coleslaw sandwiches. I mean, uh, oh man. And and he does it up big because uh, the last tailgate that I went to to see him was in Buffalo, and and he had egg sausage pancakes. I mean, he was he was doing it up, man. And and so we had a good tailgate at the Buffalo game, even though we took an L a couple years back in Buffalo. But um, yeah, so he tailgated and and uh, had a nice little crew. And and as I was walking through the lots, there were several other. Uh, People that had redskin tents, they they said they weren't going to buy money on a commander's tent when they already had a perfectly functioning good redskins tent, which I don't blame. Hey, I still them. got I mean, four of them, so yeah. I'm, I'm not so you, replacing them until someone gives me cash for it. There you go. That, so you know the deal. So I said, hey, I don't have a problem with it. So we took pictures as well, and and so man, it was just a, a great crowd. Um, I had a couple of people who who tried to do the whole boo thing, but I was like, listen, you guys are just like us. So just just quiet now, you know. I think they're worse than us, man. After <laughs> yeah, watching this yeah. game, yeah. seeing Matt Jones, this is what his third year. I can't so, garbage, so, man. Yeah. So so one of the the things that cracked me up was as I was walking, he goes, "You got that big old W on, but you're gonna take an L. You don't have Joe Theismann anymore." And I said, "Huh? Well, you guys don't have Tom Brady anymore. Just shut him down." And everybody in this crew was just like. <laughs> So, uh, that was that cracked me up, man. But uh, had a good time, and, and you know what? So, as far as the crowds are concerned, I'd say that it was probably uh, eighty-five to ninety percent, obviously Pats fans, oh, yeah. but fifteen to ten percent Commanders fans, and and it was a pretty good showing. I was actually surprised. That was awesome, man. Actually, on the TV feed, obviously we saw you in the end zone because B Rob jumped into your arms. I can only imagine how many times your phone blew up after that. You probably had to charge it from all the text messages you were getting. But they showed a bunch of other Commanders fans slash Washington fans in the stands whenever something good would happen. And it was it was great to see, man. And at a certain yeah. point, a couple times during the game, you could hear boos and things happening in our favor. So there was definitely some vocal presence if not, you know, physical presence out there at the stadium. And before the game, I think they had a picture or a video of Josh Harris showing his ups, trying to dab some people up in the stands as he's walking through one of the tunnels. Did you get a chance to see him on the field pregame? I actually did. I got to talk to him briefly. Cool guy. And he says, hey, rally captain, keep doing what you're doing. We we love it. And And that, let me tell you something. I don't think that Dan ever said that to me even though we had a couple conversations he never said that i think it was more so hi how you doing type of thing and you know and, and keep it kept it moving but uh you know mr harris he just to hear him say that man it, it it meant a lot and after the game um charles leno walked over to me i was on the opposite side of the field well not the opposite side but but so i was to the left of the tunnel if you will yeah. away from them and and so he was walking toward the tunnel and he, and he saw me and he made his way over to me and 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 um i had my back turn or i was actually packing up because you know as i said we well, just hey, had man, a photo I, shoot yeah I, just, I had to go and uh some fans were like 
Patriots fans were like, hey, this player is coming over towards you. I think he wants to talk to you. And I was like, talk to me? And I looked around, and, and Ari, Charles Leno was walking over to me, and he goes, Cap, we appreciate it, man. Now, initially, initially, I took the chain off because I thought, hey, this would be a perfect opportunity for him to don the chain. And he goes, no, no, I can't do that. But I just wanted to, to say thank you. I appreciate you, man. And I said, oh, man, I, that, that means even more, brother. So, And then he walked away and went back to the locker room, and, and I scurried on up the steps. But uh, it was a great experience overall, man. That's awesome, man. I mean, for those of our listeners that are listening, if you guys haven't done an away game, I don't think there's anything like leaving an away stadium with all their fans, heads down, your head up high, and you're just basking in that dub. I mean, getting a win at FedEx, ah, that's fine. But getting a win on someone else's territory, hit rally up, man. SBEvents.net. I don't know how many trips you got left or how many spots you got left. But having gone to a bunch of away games and actually seen wins, it's hard to explain the difference in getting a win on the road versus getting a win at home because you're sitting yeah. there in someone else's house yeah, and you're trying to be respectful, but they're sometimes not being as respectful back to you and you get the last laugh. And to me, there is no other feeling like that other than maybe winning a playoff game at home that kind of equates. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Um, and as far as th the only trip that I have room for is it's not sold out is the Seattle, I'm sorry, the uh, Jets Christmas Eve bus trip. That's the only trip that I have with vacancies. So, you know, there's, there are a couple different packages available, whether if you just want to ride up, you can do that, or you want to, you want a, a game ticket and ride up, or you want food, game ticket, and a ride, obviously. So three different packages if you want, you know, check it out. We'll do your right. You know, you don't have to worry about any tolls. You don't know how the weather's going to be. Let somebody else do the driving. Sit back, relax, and even have an adult beverage. And you nice never know. SB, SB events even might want to uh, give you one. So, hey, we'll see what happens. No, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be up in New Jersey for that game. But before we get to that game, yeah. this was our first win versus the Pats since 2003. The first mm -hmm. win we've actually had in New England since 96. So since before you were traveling. Mm -hmm. And I know it doesn't feel like it, maybe depending on who you are, we'd lost four games in a row. And I know the Eagles game didn't feel like a loss to some because we stood toe to toe with those guys, but really it's been four games in a row. So just to actually get that the offense had consecutive 400 plus yards. I mean, I can't remember the last time that happened. I think it was 2020 or something like that. Five players had four or more catches. We had six offensive plays with 20-plus yards. And Sam joined Mark Rippon and Kirk Cousins as the only Washington quarterbacks to record three games of 300-plus passing yards in their first 10 career games. I mean, wow. I never wow. felt that we were out of it, even though Julie – so I listened to the radio feed. You guys listen to the pod. You know that Julie's a friend – and I'm a big fan of the radio feed. I can't stand the TV guys. They put a stat out that said the Patriots were 109, three and one when leading at halftime. And going into the half, we were down because of a 64 yard run. And I doubt you've had a chance to look at the game yet. I'm not sure because I think you had to work today. But that 64 yard run was just an absolute horrible play by Duran mm -hmm. and by Jamin. We finally blitzed, two linebackers blitzed, didn't get to the hole, and the next thing you know, boom, the guy was gone. Scored and then the other out. one, yeah. that, uh, was that B-Rob fumble in your end zone or the opposite one? It was my end zone. So their player just straight punched that ball out. Did they show the mm -hmm. replay on the Jumbotron? Oh, yeah. Definitely yeah, did. I mean, it was a perfect spot. I mean, right on top of the tip of that ball, knocked that thing right out. And I think they only had to go 24 yards. So next thing you know, we're up 10 0, and now we're down 14 10. Like you, and on top of that, Sam is driving down the field yeah. and we're there. And I think mm -hmm. this was opposite end zone of yours, that damn interception, man. I mean, I no, could that not came believe... right. That, that, that was right in my end zone. Okay. So yeah. that was your end zone. Yeah. 
it was ridiculous. This is actually what Sam had to say about that pick. Um, since Nikki kept bringing it up, what did happen on that interception? Dang, John. <laughs> I tried to talk about it early, so y'all would just stop at But no, nah, um, <laughs> nah, it was just, you know, obviously in a situation like that, you got to try to throw the ball away. And they, I was obviously I was on the perimeter, and it was a rollout pass. And then kind of a guy triggered and tried to come hit me late. And so I was just trying to find an incompletion, um, and I just didn't get the ball out of bounds. Hmm. No, it didn't look like he was trying to throw it out of bounds to me. No, he was coached to say he was he was coached <laughs> to say he should have thrown it out of bounds, but that ball went right. He was trying to hit Jaheim crossing, and he and he just didn't see the guy shallow. He didn't see the color of that guy shallow. Uh, it's funny that that you brought that play up because um, Doc says you should have damn threw the ball to rally captain in the stand. He's right there. <laughs> Cause, cause the ball came right. I mean, it was right in my end zone yeah. in that corner right there. And so somebody, somebody contacted me and said, "Listen, to this, listen. They, they apparently had it recorded or something." And so uh, he said, "Listen," to this. and Doc says, "You should do the ball to rally cap, and he's right there." To get. <laughs> Thought that was funny. No, I heard it on the post game show and heard Doc Lindell talking, and I mean, it's just Sam had a heck of a game. Three hundred twenty-five yeah. yards, Definitely average did. seven point two, the touchdown. In the pick, the part that drove me crazy was two things. Pringle caught that ball and to me went out of bounds. The refs called him inbounds. So there's 24 seconds left on the clock. We had three timeouts. Mm -hmm. Rivera didn't bother to call one. It's like you can tell your team is rushing to get up there. And they thought they had more time, and Sam was rushing. And next thing you know, he scrambled and threw that interception. To me, we talked about this during a show, maybe two shows ago. They're not rollover minutes. Use your damn timeouts. You had three of them at that point. Maybe get a better play. And one thing that was new to me, we actually ran five plays from I formation. I was shocked to see that. Where was this earlier in the season, maybe for that two-point conversion against Philly? You know, mm -hmm. we finally got Arma running up as a fullback. Maybe yeah. do I form play action and hit Arma in the flat or something. Call a timeout, yeah. let your guys regroup. But Sam felt it just, if you watch the progression back and that drive, we felt like we were hurrying and we had time to take a deep breath and relax and maybe get the kid to, you know, take a load off for a split second. And I just, mm -hmm. it drove me crazy. We didn't do that. And the next thing you know, boom, interception and all that goodness just went right out the window because the Pats got the ball at half. What were you thinking when that happened? I was just like, oh, no, come on, guys. Don't do this to me. Because at that point, the score, I want to say, was 10 to 10. It was tied. Or it was either, yeah, I want to say because because they had the interception, or not the interception, but the punch out. And then we we uh, they scored. And and I was just like, oh, here we are. Well, I said, it's 0, zero. And uh I just I couldn't believe it. I said, no, we we are not going to self destruct. Don't do that to us, to ourselves. And luckily, you know, it was actually it was fourteen ten when that happened with that pick, and we didn't, you know, self destruct. But you're sitting here thinking we have been leading this entire game, and one of our keys to the game that you and I both gave last week for our preview show was time of possession, control time of possession, because you've got mm -hmm. guys out there that haven't played. They're not going to be used to getting these snaps. Well, time of possession in the first half, we had it 21 minutes and 42 seconds. The Pats had it 8 minutes and 18 seconds. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, but we gave up a short field touchdown on that B-Rob fumble. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't blame B-Rob for that at all. But that 64-yard that 64-yard touchdown run that we gave up, okay. I don't want to say it was a fluke. Everyone gives Del Rio a hard time for not blitzing. He finally calls basically a run blitz. And the guys just didn't get to where they were supposed to go. And on the TV home. feed, they showed Del Rio with an iPad or a Surface with Jamin Davis there. Like, see, this is where you screwed up, kid. You're supposed to get here. You didn't get here. But on top of that, Deron Payne, he just got moved out of that hole like he was nothing. And it was kind of surprising to see that happen. And looking at Deron's PFF grade, he got a 48 on run defense this week, which... Mm was kind of shocking to see Duran and John both got sub 50. John got a 40.9. And Doc was talking about this on the post game show. You got to go back and watch the film because 
now that you don't have Tez and Chase on the outside, maybe those guys are getting double teamed up the middle. And on that rush, I can tell you they weren't double teamed. At least Duran wasn't. But were they getting double teamed more on other plays? Because you don't have the two bookends you got to worry about from a defensive perspective. And maybe that's why Jack wanted to bring the blitz. But you know what they say, you, you live by the blitz and you die by the blitz. And that time we got torched by it. But I never felt, even though we were coming in after halftime, that the game was out of reach because, man, Matt Jones is not good, dude. I am <laughs> so glad that we have Sam, basically a rookie, and they've got Matt over there who, you know, to me, Mac, I am not happy if I'm a Pats fan and that's who my future is. Yeah, they were they were chanting he's a bum. Type Are you of serious? Chance. Oh yeah, they were. Oh, they that's were chanting hilarious. That. Yeah, and then I said, I said, Rock, he's a bum, and uh, they they got a kick out of that. But uh, yeah, they were they were saying no, he that he's a bum, and, they, and they're done with him, you know. But all it takes, realistically, man, is for the kid to have two good games, and he'll be right back into the graces of of, of the fans again, just just like any fan base, man. You know, fans are are are. are are tempered you know we just are and so when things go bad everybody sucks but when, but a couple of plays later they do well oh he's our man you know so that, that's just how it is so I, I doubt they would have showed it on the jumbotron but there were a couple third downs where the pats went off the field because they didn't convert he was yelling at his own players mm -hmm. and giving them crap and i couldn't believe that he was acting like that and that a belichick quarterback would even get away with that. It was kind of shocking to me because I don't watch Pats games. I can't stand New England. There's a story I'll tell to listeners when I see them in person about my experience in Boston. And you can imagine it didn't go well. So it's a place mm -hmm. that I don't ever really want to go to or be a part of. But seeing him yell at his players, I'm thinking, dude, if, if I'm your lineman and you're yelling at me and that happened or you just threw that ball, I'm letting – you know, KJ Henry comes sack your ass from behind and knock the wind out of you, which let me tell you, man, have you seen the replay on that on Twitter? No. Dude, that, that play was a bunch of BS. I Everyone's been talking about it back home. And yes. I'll put it up here. I'll put it on the YouTube page. I mean, if you're listening to this, you know exactly what play I'm talking about. But Oh, yeah. I just feel horrible for the kid for getting his first sack and having it stolen, having it taken away by a bunch of BS refs. Here you go. Here's the play. Boom. Right there. It's ridiculous that they called that a rough in the past penalty. I mean, what the hell do you expect to happen? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, Nikki Javala was the elected reporter to go talk to the referees about what happened. So this is the report. It's from uh, Nikki's Twitter. PFWA, I think Pro Football Writers of America pool reporter Nikki Javala interview with the referee Adrian Hill. Question, can you walk us through that play when KJ Henry is called for roughing the passer? What did you see? Was the call appropriate from what you saw? Hill, I was the calling official and the call was roughing the passer due to full body weight. The ruling on the field was that the defender came down with forcible contact chest to chest. He didn't perform one of those acts to remove most of that body weight a gator roll or a clear to the side when he was coming in. He came down directly with that force on the player. So the category was full body weight question. In those situations where the defender is coming from that weak side and the quarterback has sort of his back turned to him, what was the defender supposed to do to avoid putting his full body weight on Hill? There are two common techniques. One we call the gator roll, where if he takes that player and rolls to the side, so they both land on their side, that 90 degree rotation as he comes around or he comes down and breaks the fall first with his hands and knees, almost like in a crab like fashion on top of the quarterback. So you got KJ coming around for his first sack ever. The kids excited as hell finally gets a chance to play because chase and Tez are gone and he's coming in and you're expecting him to do this. And I don't know what the hell the guys talk about chest to chest. He hit him in the back coming on his weak side. He had no idea it was coming. And you think he's going to have a chance to think about gator rolling or moving? I mean, it no. was just, it was a bunch of BS. And I wrote down, if we lose by three points, it's because the referees gave them 
that drive and they made a damn field goal off of this. And it's going to be some crap, man. I just, yeah. I know you're up in New England, so everyone was happy as hell for it, but there was zero chance that should have been a flag. No, no. And, and basically, you know, shout out to KJ because, hey, man, he he saw blood as a shark. He knew the blood was in the water and, and he, he came for him. And on one aspect, now don't get me wrong, I am not on the ref side. But on one aspect, okay, I hear what you're saying. And yeah, that's what's written. But you got to go with the spirit of the game. I understand the letter of the game, but you got to go with the spirit of the game. And, and he wasn't trying to cause harm to the guy. Not at that's all. my biggest thing. He wasn't trying to pile drive him. See, that's that's my definition of, of, of uh, you know, uh, defensive either receiver or, or quarterback roughing the passer. You know, he, you drill him. You, you, you bring him. You, 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 you bear hug him and, and you bring him to the ground and you, then you put your weight on him. I mean, basically, he's he's it's a motion of tackling. So. I was pissed off about that at the stadium and, and uh, their fans were very happy, but all the commanders fans, we, we, we booed the hell out of them. I mean, it's John Allen was all with the junkies and he, they basically said, John, we know you can't really say much or else you're going to find. And John said, I don't care. Find me. And he was just going over it, how he had 900 snaps plus last year and how we got seven sacks out of those or somewhere around those numbers. Mm -hmm. And imagine how, you chances you get to actually sack somebody just thinking about those ratios and KJ his first game actually getting some real reps and they steal that kid's sack away that's what pisses me off the most in the end the three points didn't matter we won so that's fine I just feel bad for that kid and to me Gino better watch out because mm -hmm. KJ is going to get his this week coming against your ass and I can't wait for that kid to celebrate once he finally gets his first legit sack and in regards to PFF, he got the third highest pass rush grade. Now, granted, he didn't have as many snaps as some of the other guys, but he got a 61.3. That's not mm. bad, man. I mean, yeah. Andre Jones Jr., he stepped up. James Smith-Williams, Casey Tuhill. You had a bunch of guys that don't typically play, and they got a chance to. And I can't say we really missed Chase and Montez this week from what's actually been happening. I mean, we didn't get a ton of pressure. But that's just because Mac Jones gets rid of the ball fast. I don't think that has anything to do with the guys that actually were rushing. What say you? I say that uh, I didn't feel a drop off, if you will. Maybe, okay, how about this? Maybe just a tad, but it wasn't enough for a game-changing change, if that makes sense. I mean, it was just a tad, man. Maybe Tez may have gotten home or maybe he may have done the proper uh, role, if you will. But other than that, no, I didn't. I didn't notice a, a huge drop off, and uh, and I'm I'm happy for it. I really am because I I, I told you, and I'm going to continue to say it. We still have pieces that are on this team that need to have their hands on to to solidify this puzzle to put it together. They're there. We're we're seeing it evolve. Our linemen, our offensive line, we've changed some things up. They looked a hundred times better. A hundred. So I will continue to say it. Keep changing those pieces out until they fit because who knows what we have within these guys. Hey Amen, man. And Montez just signed an extension with the Bears last week. Mm -hmm. A four-year contract extension with $98 million in new money. 72.9 million guaranteed. The deal's worth 105 million. So his average salary goes to 24.5 million. This mm. is why you traded yeah. him. This we is why him, zero chance we would pay him that. Zero chance, in my opinion, he's even worth that. But bad teams have to overplay for good players. And that's mm -hmm. what it came down to. So if you're still on the fence, of we didn't get enough. You got a second round pick for a guy that was going to walk. And this right here is proof that he was going to walk. And they did finally what good teams do. They made the most out of that transaction and got other assets for it. And talking about changing it up until you find those pieces. I mean, the offensive line is night and day with huh. Nick Gates gone. And I, I hate to talk about city Charles you know, losing a spot to injury. I don't know if that's what's actually going to happen, but 
Larson and Chris Paul have been doing a damn good job. And this yeah. is actually what Ron had to say about Larson in the offensive line. With Larson up front, I mean, what is the line doing differently, better um, than before? I mean, what what what's the biggest change with him at center? Well, I think the biggest change with with him and 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 um, and, uh, and and Chris Paul is uh, first of all, there's probably about uh, sixty pounds. Um, they're both three thirty, um, so there's a lot of girth between our two guards and our center. I think that's that's been a big part. They're they're very stout. Um, and then secondly, I think the big part of it too has been uh, has, has really been Tyler's. You know how 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 veteran Tyler is. You know his experience, his understanding, and feel for what we're doing and how we're doing it. Ron, what are specific plays or looks where you can see Tyler's veteran experience coming into play, helping the line, helping Sam? Well, you know, there's a couple things that that you can you can point to, and and, and some of it is, um, you know, helping to ident ID the direction that the protection is going to go. And the type of protection we're going to use, um, and then you see them trying to to pass a snap off, guys, um, as far as trying to pass them from one blocker to the other. Uh, there was an instance, and I, I can't remember exactly the play specifically, but they had a three game three man stunt, and and one of our guards wasn't coming off, so Taylor came back, and let left Sam where he was, and he picked up the crosser. I mean, that was a very veteran move. Um, was watching it today in the, in the, with the offensive coaches, and that was one of the things that stood out was just how savvy uh, 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 Tyler was when he saw that. You know, he, he turned to his right. Uh, Sam was stuck on a guy, so he just came behind Sam and then picked the guy up in the in the next gap, and it really shut it down. Um, and then uh, you see it also when he's directing the run game. You know, IDing the mic and knowing where we're going to as far as those things. Um, those are veteran things that you know you learn over time. You have you're very comfortable with, um, and, and and Tyler has done that very well for us. Larson's a damn good football player. And I understand yeah. at least for our team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a stat that JP Finley likes to talk about. Washington is seven two and one now when Larson starts. So. Gee. <laughs> I mean, that's just something right there that you can't really ignore. But yet we did. And you talked about it during the Ravens practice you yeah. had a chance to go to when they were doing those stunts. We were struggling. And mm -hmm. Coach just talked about it now, going back and looking at the film. And this is something that a lot of fans probably don't see because we're not watching offensive linemen. I played offensive line before, so I, I tend to look at the big uglies when I'm watching games and this and that and kind of see how they're doing, but you typically aren't watching games for that, but to see Larson do that and adjust and pick up those blocks. I mean, it's, there's an art to it. And to know that you have a guy as for Sam, knowing that he's got guys up front now that are picking these things up because he was getting a ton of pressure right up the middle and yeah. the Patriots blitz third most in the NFL. So you're thinking, wow. oh, damn, here we go. We're in it again. Sam only got sacked just a handful of times. I think it was, what, three sacks? I mean, it wasn't too bad. Three for 17. So, I mean, it wasn't the one sack that he gave up the week prior. But, hey, he actually had a chance to have a pocket. And he stood in there and held his ground. And, man, that kid's got some guts, man. That, that mm -hmm. running play where I thought, oh, damn, it's third and 23. Might as well just get ready to punt the ball. And then Sam tucks it when no one's open and then just runs down the field. And I don't know if the Pats let up because they didn't want to get a penalty, but he just lowered his shoulder towards the end of that and fought for those last five yards. Like he was B Rob rolling into an end zone, man. It was freaking awesome. Well, they didn't practice the FOM, the, the fun. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the fundamentals of football, FOF, excuse me. They didn't wrap up. And so that goes back. They, they had him dead to right. But they just didn't wrap up, and he he wiggled right out of it. And next thing you know, first down. I ain't mad at it, so I'm I'm very happy for it that Sam was able to do that, and that also gave him, I think, some more confidence. You know, when a guy gets a good run like that and and moves the chains, it, it man, it 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 means a lot to him and the team because the team is like, okay, you did it for us, now let's go do something for you. And that right there, to me, is 
was a turning point in the game. Like they're seeing Sam who is taking all these hits. That's all any of the talking heads can talk about is Sam. How, how long is he going to last? But now he's out there lowering his shoulder and fighting for 23 yards after a sack, stupid penalty, just all this this stuff happening. And he was willing this team to come back. And Mm -hmm. there are a lot of fans, John Allen talking about how he's the quarterback of the future. He's it. You know, the team finally has its franchise quarterback. I don't know if that's true. And I'm not going to get hung up on that personally, because to me, whoever the new GM is, whoever he declares is all that matters. And Sam is stockpiling games to prove that he's going to be the franchise quarterback of the future. But really it's up to whoever that guy is and that coach. And we go from there, but right now I'm enjoying watching this kid sling it. And if anything, I don't feel like we're ever going to be out of a game that we can't compete because he gives us a chance. Definitely. I I definitely agree with you on that. And and what people need to realize is that, as we said, if he has the time, he can get the job done. And and we're seeing it evolve in front of our eyes. And that's what I like. A nice young guy who knows what he wants to do with the ball. Sometimes he makes mistakes, but what quarterback doesn't? You know, no, no one's perfect, but but his tenure to be in the league and, and he's doing what he's doing, I'm satisfied. I am too, man. And the touchdown pass he had to uh, Jahan, which got me over my fan duel bet. Thank you. But <laughs> he adjusted and the enemy adjusted. They had a cover zero blitz. Sam was talking about it on his press, right? Cut it up. So he knew because of that, there was no one over top that had Jahan, but the other person that adjusted was the enemy. We went max protect. We kept a tight end in and a running back in to give Sam some time to hit that deep throw. And next thing you know, Jahan was right there and he had that step on that DB and it was six and it was beautiful. And earlier on in the year, we would have five guys blocking and the cover zero would get there. We had more than enough guys to handle that. And Sam stood in there and delivered that ball right where it had to be. And these two are learning each other. The enemy first time play caller is learning the assets he has at his disposal is understanding what his players can and cannot do. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, it's given me a little bit of hope from an offensive perspective about the future because Terry's under contract, Jahan's under contract. You know, those guys, whoever takes over is going to, you know, still keep them here. And if Sam can keep doing this with eight games left, maybe we just get some other linemen up front with this new GM that comes in place and give him more of a pocket instead of some journeymen. But you know who did really impress me? And actually, I'm curious to see from your perspective, who shocked you that did a lot better than uh, you thought they would this week? I'm going to say Paul, my guard. Chris Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Chris definitely had a heck of a game. I mean, he got a 69-grade pass blocking. He was the best pass blocker, according to PFF. And he got a 63 run blocking, which isn't bad. Considering it's his second week in there, he did a damn Mm -hmm. good job going up against that New England defense. For me, it was Emmanuel Forbes. Forbes played his ass off. He put a tweet out there, and it was just a picture of him stretching, saying, I'm back. And I'm thinking... The kid got off of social media, and now you're going to put this on here saying you're back? Just just let it go. A lot of, a lot of pressure on yourself, yeah. Yeah, let your, let your play speak for you. Don't just put anything out there that makes other people jump on top of you. Well, according to PFF, he had the highest defensive grade out of anybody with a 91.3. Ooh, nice. Nice. In coverage. Know- yeah, go ahead. I said, I, I knew he played well, but I didn't know he played that well. Wow. Yeah. According to PFF, 91.3. He had a 91 in coverage. Best coverage grade out of anybody on the team. 76.6 in tackling and a 73.1 in run defense. I mean, I, I get that it's the Patriots and that they're not a good team offensively, that they don't do a ton. But considering how bad this kid was beat 
the past couple times he's been in. And I understand it was A.J. Brown. But it wasn't AJ that just took him to school. There were other times as well yeah. to bounce back as a DB to be on an island and play as well as he played. I'm proud of that kid, man. And I don't know if it was Daryl Green calling him up and them going to you know <laughs> some high school field and working on some stuff for 15 to 20 minutes or what. But he stepped up, man, and he showed out and he let his play finally talk and shut people up. Love to see it. And it's what's needed. You know, you you put a guy on the bench for a minute, let him look at the tape, see what he's doing wrong. And like you said, Hall of Famer Dale Green may have reached out to him and and uh, took him to Chuck E. Cheese afterwards. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, man, he did what he had to do, it, and, he, and he's learning. That, that's, that's the whole thing about this molding of this squad. We can see it doing it right in front of our faces so i'm i'm very happy for it and and um i'm looking forward to next week as well while i bask in this win while i continue to bask in this win i'm not moving on yet i'm still enjoying victory monday <laughs> but this is actually what ron had to say about forbes ron with Emmanuel, uh, how much of his improvement this past game was mental versus something he changed physically or technique wise i think it was more about just learning and understanding and getting what it takes to, to play the position um i think a big part of it too was working some of the technique things that we're asking of him um he still has a ways to go i mean he you know he did some good things but there's still some things that that we're missing that that he's got to get better at and he's got to understand how important those things are and you know, we'll continue to harp on it. We'll continue to challenge him, and, and we'll see how it goes. He's got a tough test this week, and we'll get to that on Wednesday for our preview show. But as of right now, the kid bounced back in a big way. And on top of that, Quan Martin sealed the game with that pick. He was where he needed to be, mm -hmm. and that's your first round and your second round pick making contributions, actual real considerable contributions on the team and people were knocking Rivera for taking these two guys that hadn't seen the field. Me definitely knocking them. A lot of people were giving them a hard time, but seeing these two guys step up, that's just the future right there. And Quan didn't have as many snaps, but he got a 71.3 in his coverage. I mean, I'll take that. in regards to your top players, he was third in pass coverage. He didn't have as many snaps to be graded upon, but still, he's a second-round kid. They came out there and iced the game. And in the past, earlier on in the season, I would have been worried that our defense would have to shut these guys down. But the combination of New England not being a high-powered attack and our defense actually stepping up lately, I never thought that we were out of this game. And I felt like you were going to get that victory stake in that lobster. And – it worked out, man, and I'm damn proud of these guys. And, hey, we're only four and five, but we got a chance to go back to 500 heading out to the West Coast this week. We're right in the thick of it, and that goes back to what we've always said. There's still a lot of football that's left. It's just a matter of letting it play out, studying, getting better, and proving it on the field. A lot of football still left, man, and we saw what the boys did last night to the nemesis of the Eagles. So – you know, everybody's right there. They are. And right now we'd be the eighth seed. And I don't I don't want to talk playoffs. No. I'm just talking about no. how close the NFC is. The NFC yeah. this year, there's a ton of parity. And you got to beat who's in front of you. I mean, mm -hmm. it sucked if you think about it, losing to the Bears and losing to the Giants. You know, there was some garbage, but I don't want to think too far ahead. Daniel Jones, done for the year. Tyrod Taylor on IR. So realistically, if we do what we can this week against Seattle, we got a wounded Giants team on their third string quarterback coming back home to FedEx Field. We got a chance to still do something, but more importantly, we got young guys on this team contributing. You got Sam just having a heck of a game back to back and stringing together. You got Forbes, you got Martin coming in there. You got other guys stepping up, KJ Henry stepping up. You got a young nucleus of this team that are all getting reps. And that's not something you can simulate on the practice field. Live game reps is invaluable. And that's just going to make this team even better down the road as these young guys get a chance to get more snaps and just more practice behind them. 
And, and I always say those young dogs are ready to eat. Let them loose. Let them eat. And we're seeing it come together. And I love it. It's that puzzle, man. It's slowly but surely coming together. For me, it would take a couple of years because I'm colorblind. But for these guys, they're starting to mold together in a couple of pieces. But for you, who gets your rally chain this week? I'm going to, we, we called his name. He got the, he got the, to me, the game winning interception, game clinching interception. So Martin, he gets the chain. That's a good one. I mean, I, it, it was, it was getting a little close down there, having those guys drive that ball mm -hmm. down towards the end. But for me, I called it earlier. I, I got to give it to Forbes. I mean, I can't imagine being that kid and just taking all the hate on social media, having all these people, number one, say you were overdrafted because of your size. And then AJ Brown just taking you to school, not once, but twice, mm -hmm. and getting benched. Then getting a Hall of Famer literally calling you out and saying that you're not being coached properly, so putting you back in the headlines again. And for you to come back that way and just play like you did this week, I hope we see some consistency out of him. And it's going to be a tough challenge this week going up against DK and all the other guys over in Seattle. Lock but it. he gets my mm -hmm. round chain right now. Okay, that's good stuff, man. And the good thing is he's a youngin' who's eager to learn, eager to prove himself, and it's slowly happening each week. And each week or, or next week, he has a chance to do it all over again and get better in his craft. Well, I, I hear the music playing in the background, and that tells me that we are bringing another episode of the DMMS All to a close. If by chance you have not, I repeat, if you have not, Hit the like, share, subscribe button. Please do us a favor and do that. It does go a long way, and we greatly appreciate it. Every week, someone new is coming up to me saying, we love the show. I just started tuning in to you guys, and I like what I'm hearing. And as long as you continue to do your part, we will do our part. Amen. Ted, always a pleasure talking to you this week. And uh, remember, guys, you rep it hard or you don't rep it at all. Rally Captain, Tailgate Ted, peace.